guys, and welcome to this obligatory episode of Through the Glass Table for another fucking superhero by Warner Brothers. Yay! For Dark Palettes! Um, Everett. <laughs> My name is Ismael. And I'm Everett. And today we'll be reviewing bon, don, 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 Zack Snyder's, oh wait, no, Josh Whedon's fucking Justice League. Justice League. Just like your HIV test after a night of getting banged out by two raw black creamy dicks, it's exactly what you think it is. Now that you're loaded up in another Takati, Everett, why don't you uh, start us off with... Uh, uh. Uh, Justice League. <clears throat> I actually walked out of this movie with a smile on my face. It was bad. It's real bad. It was terrible. What do you think? I just want to be on the f- my phone for the rest of this review. I'm real on like, about it. Like, first of all, we're weak. We're weak behind. So this shows you how much we fucking care about this movie. First of all, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. I think my expectations is just so low, low, that I went in just so cynical, and I and it's bad. Don't get me wrong, it's terrible, but I thought it was fun enough. And everybody was loose enough to where it, it was enjoyable. I don't know. I, the only person I enjoyed was just because he, he was funny was Ezra Miller. Mm. That's it. But in his, his was forced jokes too. Yeah, a lot of this stuff didn't land for me and it, a lot of the uh, audience was laughing and I just, it's like, it's not that funny, guys. The direction was real bad. But the, but you could, the thing about this movie too is you could tell specifically where Joss Whedon Took over. Took over, because it's like it's like a, it's like two movies smashed together. Whereas, you know, in one scene it'll be clearly Zack Snyder all dark and brooding and it doesn't make much sense, and it'll be so absolutely silly, as you know, it's Joss Whedon. For me, as a person that loves film, I think maybe that's why I loved it because it was such a train wreck. It was just interesting to see how could something like this get made. I don't know. Um, it just didn't, like I saw it and I was just like, okay. <laughs> the guy I went to go see it with, he, he he likes to talk during movies sometimes. Mm. And like, I didn't mind it this <laughs> time around because <laughs> the movie was just so fucking boring. And it was just dry. It was very dry. I felt like I had cotton in my mouth the whole time. <laughs> it's comparable to Batman vs Superman though, which one would you prefer? This one, but it's not saying much. It's in the same vein. Yeah. So... I just thought... But this wasn't even a movie! This is just like we'll get in depth. Well, the ensemble stuff are not really movies anymore. Like this, like mashup of superheroes, like Avengers isn't really a movie. Well, I no, that's not true. Avengers, the first one, did a good job of Age of Ultron. Story. Age of Ultron was not a movie. I would say Age of Ultron is on the same level, maybe a, a little bit better. It was the same vein of a mess, maybe not as <clears throat> obviously a mess. It just felt like insert here this character, insert this character, this character meets this character. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. And then it, and it felt like they had any. There's even weird things where they were like matching the characters to their power. So like, the person that has to put Superman's body in the water is Aquaman because he's water. It was like weird, weird, simplistic storyline and stuff like that. Where it's like, oh, a child wrote this. His name's Zack Snyder. The villain didn't feel too villainous for me. Oh, yeah, that's, like Steppenwolf yeah. felt like, uh, I just hate villains that are so CGI. Like it just takes me out of it so much. And um, it's like, what is his motivation? Except for just destroying the world. I mean, it's fun. Jason Momoa, man, man is fucking beefcake. Yeah. You know, Jesus I really enjoyed Christ. him in this movie. He didn't have much to do, but I he really... didn't say anything at all, do anything. But I, well, he did. But I think his character was a lot more like, "Fuck it, I'm just here," and I kind of enjoyed that a little bit. I actually walked up thinking, "Okay, I wouldn't mind seeing." Aquaman. You know what they did? Oh, that's what they did. You know the underwater part. Underwater yeah, part. Yeah. That's kind of a setup for his movie. Supposedly, there's like an hour of footage from that. See, like everyone has a backstory, and that's a Zack Snyder's cut. The Zack Snyder's cut is over three hours long, just like Batman vs Superman. <clears throat> I, had a, I had a joke about Zack Snyder's tragedy. Please, no. Yeah, we're not gonna go there. Sick. No. I will say that the parts that I knew were Joss Whedon y, I felt Whedon. like if you're going to do DC characters like this, the way he did it was great. Because it was sort of like balls to the wall, silly. Yeah. And I thought, okay, if the serious stuff is too boring, or the serious, the serious stuff done wrong is too boring, because Christopher Nolan did it right. 
they obviously can't figure it out who's ever running DC now. So the other end is to go to just wacky, wackadoo, oaky smoky bullshit silliness. <laughs> and I felt like it worked in some of those things. Like the, the scene where... It just wasn't enough. It, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't balanced. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to... Well, that, again, is a tone of shift we're talking about. Yeah. Like, I, I But actually, that's not the fault of really the people who made the movie. It's just sort of Zack Snyder left, you know? Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah, like the, the the it's absolutely brilliant the scene with the uh, where Superman spoiler alert Superman comes alive. I mean it's a week. <laughs> yeah, fuck it, you've seen it. <laughs> Superman's fighting all of them, and the Flash is trying to do something, and then it's this great scene where he's just like yeah Turn. he notices him. And it's so stupid because he's like, "Where'd you think you going, nigga?" <laughs> and I just thought like this is so funny. And I liked that. And then the the coup de grace is where he picks up Batman and he says, now tell me, do you bleed? And I was like, yes, yes. This is it. This is the way you should do this if you can't figure it out. However, the rest of it was bad. So, so here's the thing. I know there's a lot of things wrong with this movie just like on surface level, like too much CGI. Oh. The story is fucking mess. The structure's a mess. The acting is not that great. However, the one thing... That didn't bother me because I expected that. The one thing that really bothered me, which I think this movie falls apart, is is this movie is built around Superman. Death and return? Yeah. Which, in the context of the story, if you didn't know those other movies existed, it makes sense of why that would bring everyone together. And that's why, you know, like, Batman's upset about... No, essentially Basically helping kill him, to yeah. kill him, and he's saying stuff like, "Oh, you know, he was a beacon of hope and all that stuff." And the world is upset. The problem with that is, you didn't successfully show that in the other movies. Batman and Superman barely spoke to each other mm. in Batman versus Superman, and then all of a sudden he like misses him. Like, I don't understand what what was the point of that. Like, you guys never had a full conversation besides trying to beat each other's ass. And then just one movie previous. Mm. The world hated Superman, so now they miss him. Like, I, there's no, there's no connective. Oh, you tissue. mean Superman too? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no or Batman versus Superman. There's no connective tissue between all these movies, and so the movie falls apart because when Superman comes back, I just didn't feel nothing. I was like, oh yeah, okay. The movie for me didn't feel like a group. Like they didn't feel like a team mm-hmm. because I think they had. Of course, you know, they all have their own agendas and they come at the very end and stuff. But it just, it, there, there was no, what's the right word? There's no feeling of camaraderie or like connection between any of them or like empathy between them. Yeah, I agree with you. So it's just like they all had bad chemistry. And I just, I really didn't like Ben Affleck yeah. in this. Ben Affleck is real bad in this. I don't, I don't know if it's because he's like, there's rumors saying he doesn't want to return good after this that he uh, they're trying to replace him with Jake Gyllenhaal or something like that that's weird for the Matt Reeves Batman movie everything that was going on he was probably thinking because Batman was like a character they looked up to Batman and Daredevil were two characters they looked up to yeah, he's but Bat- he, he loved Batman right you know the, in this instance though and even in Daredevil it wasn't his fault it, this is not his fault it's just the people who, who were writing and directing that's true but a writer can only write so much. You bring the words to life as an actor. Not when it's this bad. Well, I, I just like, don't know how bad it is. Like, everything he he does is just like... When's the last time you seen him in something good? Uh, that wasn't well, something he wrote. Because well, he, he stays really in the same, he hasn't really he been in the same in, thing. in things that he didn't write recently, so I can't even remember the last thing. Well, Argo. Uh, Live by Night. Yeah, he wrote that. He wrote that. that. Yeah. yeah. That was bad, actually. Um... Look, as an actor... He's not the best actor. He's not his brother. No, he's not. And as an actor, you were supposed to give 100% no matter how bad it is. I've seen so many terrible movies where Gary Oldman is in it and he's fantastic in the movie, but the movie is trash. Like, that's no excuse. But I just feel like... I can see where he's coming from. There's not much to offer with these movies anyway, so why try? I mean, they're going to make another one. But... I don't know. They're losing... They're projected to lose 50 to $100 million on this movie. Warner Brothers has lost his shit time to made a shit then. Yeah, but I, they can't keep doing this over and over again and losing it. Yet and they have it. shown that they can't. Because their DC universe is not... It's, 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 it's... 
highlighted with nice pops of of successes, but a majority of them are fucking failures. Well, Suicide Squad was a, su- a success, yeah. I don't know. Financially, it was a success. And then Wonder Woman, obviously, that's the biggest success they've had with this. But Batman vs. Superman ended up losing money. Man of Steel made money, and then this is going to lose $100 million. But the, the difference, I think, is that this is their Avengers moment, and they couldn't even pull in $90 million the weekend. Thor pulled in $130 million his first weekend. Nobody fucking likes Thor. So that's that to me, that should be... If they are like not psychopaths running Warner Brothers, that should be an indication that there's something wrong. So Ismael, what do you give uh, Justice League? The fanboy in me gives it a one out of five, which is what my Michael Bay. Yeah, I think yours is Michael Bay. Uh, so Michael Bay. I would have to give Justice League a two out of five. Two out of five. Yeah, I enjoyed it on a purely. I enjoyed it the same way I enjoy Lifetime movies. I just can't believe there are motherfuckers out there saying this is the best one yet. That's insane to me. And also, there, you know, there's a petition started where they want the Zack Snyder cuts of, of the movie. I'm just like, do you do you not realize the worst parts of this movie were the parts Zack Snyder did? It's insane to me. Um, yeah, it's just real bad, and it can be fun. If you watch it while you're cooking food and you're masturbating every 10 minutes, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's one of those movies. I just didn't hate it as much as I hated Batman vs. Superman. And it actually made me realize how bad Batman, Batman vs. Superman, Superman was. was. Because that, seeing this movie, it, it's clear to me that that movie is completely incoherent. And this was at least I, it's so simple, so stupidly simple that I was able to enjoy it from beginning to end. Please keep watching. Uh, look out for the next one, which is, you know, undeniably Star Wars. Yeah. There's I don't not much have... else coming out in December. I think Star Wars is that's it. I, no one no one goes up against Star Wars anymore. Well, there's like little stuff I want to see, like, uh, what's the, the, the J- James Franco and. Oh, the disaster. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But, but yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. Star Wars is that's what I'm waiting for. Bye. <laughs>